Well, here's a camera I haven't used in a long time. Somebody actually recently wrote in to talk about cameras. Wow. Goodbye focus, I guess. I don't know what precipitated that, but sure. <laughs> this is a Canon HF200, and until recently, I haven't been able to use it because the battery failed. It's not working. And I was using a battery that came out of my FS200 for a while, and then that stopped working. I had one hell of a time trying to get these new batteries working because you can only get aftermarket batteries now, but I'll probably talk about that in a different video. Uh, for now, I guess you could say that this serves as a test of this camera, but it's also going to serve as a video of my new toy here. Let me try out the video light and see if that kills the battery. This is a Dell Studio model. The two quad inside. Well, the Windows Vista license on the back, on the top, I guess. It is a Studio Slim 540S. Really nothing special about it. But, it's another one of these form factor of Dells. I prefer to have the, um, I would much prefer to have the desktop style case, and there is one at work that might end up in loose hands. I don't know. I really kind of doubt it, because it should have been in loose hands a long time ago, and that fell through, so... Well, I shouldn't say it fell through. It's that nobody ever followed up on it, so... It's still there, and I don't think it's going to come home anytime soon, and I can't say that I really care, honestly. <laughs> so, I don't remember exactly what's in this, other than the fact that I believe it's a Wolfdale Core 2 Quad. So, let's see, what do we have here? We have a fairly pedestrian motherboard that's mostly obscured by this. I guess that's a cable guide or something. There's the optical drive. I can't see what its capabilities are. I can't see what this RAM is. I don't think the camera can either. Is it 4 gigabytes or is it 8 gigabytes? Looks like it's got 8 gigabytes of PC2 6400. So that's actually pretty good. There's a lot of solid capacitors on this board. I'm kind of surprised to see that. But there are, of course, still some standard electrolytics. All of which look like they're in okay condition. Acbell power supply, much better than a best tech piece of crap. A little bit of lint, but it's not doing too bad. And a one terabyte hard drive, which has been wiped. So there's nothing really to see here. Oh, that's an extra power connector. Or say the power right there. I don't think you could put two hard drives in here. Oh, maybe you could. Yeah, it looks like you actually could. So that's not bad, I suppose. I might do that. Put in like an SSD or something and use this as a data drive. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install something else on this. Probably Linux because it's got a Windows Vista COA on it, and I'm not going to really install Vista. Um, I know some people probably would uh, expect me to do that, because I have done that with several machines, but I'm not going to do that with this one, because I don't need any more Windows Vista systems. So, alright. So, let's go ahead and plug this in. Now powered on. So we should. Do make some interesting noises. I don't know if you heard them. Let's see if we go into setup. Yes, there's setup. Well, the uh, actually that time is correct. <laughs> 
It is almost uh, half past midnight right now. So you can see the front there, the white penny LED, as opposed to blue, a lot of these other systems. Oh crap. There we go. Good old press and bang tactic. Works almost every time. But don't do that to a nice computer. So we'll put our installation disk in there. And it'll get stuck because of course it'll get stuck. But uh, anyway, coming back to this thing. I almost found it funny how SATA 2 and 3 were not present on these systems. Not really sure why. There's our one terabyte hard drive. My car keys are in my pocket, so just watch me set off my car alarm or something equally as irritating. There it is, Studio Slim 540S. There's the BIOS. I wonder if there's an update for this. There probably is. But. I'm not installing Windows just to in install that BIOS update. Oh, there it is, 8 gigs of RAM, DDR2-800. It's the most this thing will ever see. I believe that you can get 4 gigabyte DDR2 modules, but it's purely academic at this point. It's a Q9400, which is actually pretty decent. Video memory size, 128 is the biggest. PAVP mode, I have no idea what that actually is. It probably said, this does not support uh, AHCI mode. It's kind of interesting for a machine of this new, but... Not very many options there. <laughs> uh, power management. Auto power on. Oh. I can't set that. Oh, never mind. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Last state is exactly what I want. Boot device priority. Boot to CD first. There is only one drive there. It's funny, for a system that is completely SATA, there is no AHCI. Report keyboard errors. Of course, there's no password. There might have been, but I almost certainly wiped it when I wiped the drive. So, we are going to go ahead and install, assuming this disk will read, Kubuntu Linux. Because I don't think I've actually used Kubuntu on uh, anything, at least not in the recent past. It's hard to believe. It's only the beginning of March. And the snow's gone. Just about. This is the kind of snowpack that we would normally have at the end of April. Or thereabouts. I don't know what that bodes in terms of droughts this year. Hopefully it's not too bad. There's an airplane off in the distance, but I'm not convinced I can zoom in on it. It's a spectacular night. A little humid. Kind of surprised by that, although the fact that it's not exactly cold, I'm sure it doesn't help. There's a lot of people that are not home right now, which is kind of odd. Especially given it's almost one o'clock in the morning. But yeah, so far this battery seems to be doing okay. It seems to be working. This, on the other hand, yeah, I'm not so sure about this. Sounds like it's trying, but... I don't know. That optical drive might be bad. I hope not, because I don't exactly have a replacement sitting around and I really don't want to make a USB stick for this because I'm honestly not sure this system even supports USB booting. I didn't think it was that old but 
I don't remember what the capabilities of the Inspiron 530 happen to be, and this is basically the same system with the same board. It's just a slightly different BIOS, maybe with a slightly different, uh, slightly different chipset, slightly different capabilities. Okay, let it sit overnight. It did actually boot. Now, of course, the question is whether or not I can actually run the installer. Should have a network connection. It should actually have internet. <clears throat> we'll see. I would like... Yep, looks like it's got network. Install everything. Should use the entire desk because there's only one desk and it's empty. <laughs> that's funny. Hope that's not going to actually be a problem, but I don't think it will be. Oops, I hit go back by accident. So I'll put in these user details. Alright, so we are now installing, and hopefully it gets through that without issue. Okay, installation has finished. Press restart. I'm probably going to have to use the famed press and bang tactic to get that disc back once it does finally decide to restart here. I should probably replace the optical drive in this machine. I don't know, maybe I will eventually, but I don't think I've got any serial ATA optical drives just sitting around. I might in one of the boxes back there. Oh, I did not. Wow, that's actually impressive. So, it's probably binding up on the cover. Let's see if it boots. Because I noticed that it installed the EFI stuff. Even though the system will never see EFI ever. Sounds like it's working. Here we go. Have a mouse cursor now. Nobody's idea of a speed demon. Of course, if it had an SSD, it would be much better. Here comes the Plasma Desktop. I 
If you want my honest opinion, I'm not the world's biggest fan of the plasma desktop. A little bit too glitzy for my liking. I much prefer the older desktop environment, which I believe was forked out and is called Trinity now. Wow, this is taking forever. I wonder what's going on. I've got a hard drive LED on the front. Sign of the forgotten time. There we go. Updates are available. Even though I told it to install updates while I was running the install process. So that's nice. Guess I better run those. Okay, here we are. Fully up to date. That's a nice error message. Doesn't really mean anything to anyone. It's taken an awfully long time to do that. So I guess We'll just let it run in the background. I'll open up the web browser here and we try and let this thing play a YouTube video. Listen to that. It must be just above the cloud cover. Oh, then you can see them over there. Oh, here they come. Where are they? There we go. Wow. That's quite the cacophony. As long as I'm gonna poop on my head, I don't really care too much. There's a field off in the distance. That tends to be a congregation point. Some of them are even going back there. I don't know if you saw them. But there's a field over there, way off in the distance. It's a congregation point for these things. Thousands of them tend to sit in that field. It's still going on out there. Wow. Anyway, I'm sure that somebody in the comments is going to call me on that pronunciation of cacophony and call me wrong. And they're probably right. I'm pretty sure that it's supposed to be pronounced cacophony, but I don't know. Cacophony sounds better to me, so that's the way that it's going to be. And if you disagree, then I don't really care. Edit the video and uh, dub yourself into it, saying it properly. That's the only way that I'm going to make you happy. Now, I'm not going to be able to get anywhere close to full resolution on this. But it's playing a 1080p HD video, no problem. Of course, there's no sound because there's no speaker. And I don't have a set of speakers out here. Well, actually, that's probably not true. I'm pretty sure I do in one of the messes. In fact, I think that bag back there has got some speakers in it. But Yeah, not sure that I care enough to get them out. So, what I probably just need to do is I need to replace this monitor with one that's got speakers. Actually, this monitor has speakers built in. Almost forgot about that. Oops. You see there. So I just have to get a cable. Uh, I'm sure I got a cable somewhere, but not for this video. You can see it. Seems to be working just fine. That's pretty much it for this anyway. There's not much else that I can really think of to demonstrate. So the geese and I would like to thank you for watching this video of this Dell Studio 540. And if you've got any comments, feel free to leave them below.